In this lesson, we will begin our discussion on the concepts surrounding class rights. Now, up until this point, we had a look at the fundamental nuances and concepts around share capital. Essentially, what a shareholder or what a creditor would get in place of the funds or the capital that he or she provides um, in the incorporation and the sustainment of a private limited company or that of a PLC. However, one of the fundamental aspects that we established in those lessons was the nuance or was the notion that each share is essentially identical to one another. Um, whatever the share value might be for the company, that is what an individual pays for and then is issued in the proportion of such payment. But in this lesson, we will have a look at an interesting context of class rights, in essence, where the valuation remains the same, but the precedence that certain shares gets over others might shift and might vary, and therefore each classification of shares will have its own unique rights. As such, this lesson overall, in other words, the lesson on class rights, will fundamentally be broken down into three specific sections. Firstly, in this particular lesson, we will look at the fundamentals of shares themselves. We'll try to put it in context and understand what essentially shares are and how academics and how jurists have considered them to be. In the next lesson, we will follow this up by looking at the different classes or classification of shares, in essence, class rights. And then finally, we will conclude this lesson on class rights by having a look at the different variations that can be made and that are made. When we look at what shares are, while you can look at it in a number of ways and which we will do so later on in this lesson, fundamentally, it is by and large a type of valuation that a person receives for his investment in a company. And essentially, this remains the same based on who you are. It doesn't necessarily change based on the individual. At any given moment in time, that particular share has its value. Now, in Boland's Trustee and Steel Brothers Company Limited, there was a semblance or a, a particular definition which was outlined, namely that a share effectively is an interest of a shareholder in a company which is measured by a sum of money for the purpose of liability and interest mutual to each shareholder. Now, what we must understand from this definition essentially is the fact that each individual shareholder is essentially in the same position as every other shareholder. Namely, the fact that everything is mutually exclusive while being um, equal to each other. Now, having said that, there is quite a distinctive way that uh, Seeley and Worthington, uh, two prominent academics in the area of company law, have defined or have looked at or considered shares. On the one hand, they feel that it is essentially a quantification of a shareholder's financial status in a company. This is the very first definition that we looked at. But apart from that, they also believe that it is a measure of the shareholder's interest in the company itself, what interest he or she has in the company. And thirdly, they feel it is also, in essence, a species of property which can be bought, sold, and or charged upon. Now, this third limb may appear quite similar or quite familiar to you if you've gone through subjects such as um, trust law or even property law for that matter. But having said that, what we need to fundamentally understand in relation to shares is that it has an equalized uh, position irrespective of who the owner of such shares are. In essence, the opportunity or the interest that is provided to a shareholder by the company is similar or equal to every such other shareholder that has an interest in the company. That was an introduction and an overview of class rights by looking at the first component, essentially the fundamentals of shares. In the next lesson, we will continue our discussion by having a look at the different classes of shares.